I think that um, our next speaker is going to keep um, Don happy that um, things are moving on and um, also um, satisfy Jonathan that um, there is a great deal to be gained from um, split personalities and um, trying to just be um, honest about the fact we're living in a very fluid um, time and our ideas are quite fluid. So I'd like to introduce um, Adam Furman. How do you start this? Ah, OK. I'll be telling you a little bit about Identity Parade, a multimedia project I exhibited at the Design Museum from September until January this year as part of the museum's annual Designers in Residence program, the theme of which last year was identity. As in Greek theater, putting on a mask lets you both be who you really are more than you can be when you're in society normally, as well as letting you explore broad topics in a humanly engaging way. I put on a mask for my residency in the museum last year, both to be more me and more about society than I ever otherwise could be. Identity is scary. If we look inside ourselves, we see it changing from day to day, month to month, crisis to crisis. And so it is a relief for many to have metacultures with which to identify nationalities, religions, certainties. For others, there is the religion of background, a pride in unusual origins that seems to invest people with value simply by where their parents were born, how much their lineages may have been persecuted, and how many stamps on their passports they can claim from their childhood. On the other hand, there is localism and the return to the micro, to the homegrown, to the immediate surroundings, a willful reduction in our horizons that desperately yearns for a past state, creating little Disneylands of farmers' markets, pop-up butchers, shops, restaurants, and gardens. I am a firm believer in the power of objects to not only represent, but help create and embody complex and singular notions of identity. If you've ever entered the living room of one recently deceased, you will know the power of assembled accoutrements to convey the breadth of a person, their life, and their entire sensibility. In the case of collections or curated intentional expressions of passionate interest, this impression is only stronger, more precise. Houses all over the world, cupboards and display cabinets are filled with the objectified confessions of long-held fetishes, loves, desires, longings summed up in dolls, transformers, cups, and saucers. This human habit goes way back, perhaps most famously exemplified by Francesco Medici's Studiolo in Florence, his hideaway that was simultaneously a collection of everything he loved the most in art, as well as a collection of objects from all over the world that for him encapsulated it. This room was both him and his world. Perhaps most poignantly, people who have immigrated to a new country will have somewhere in their new home set aside for relics from their old lives. These collections act as receptacles for the memories, relationships, and places that they have left behind. Together, the objects in such cabinets form eloquent containers of an identity frozen in premature stasis. And just as people instinctively collect, and these collections inherently embody their trajectory through life, so designers design. And taken together, their objects, perhaps even more potently, tell of their journey. Back to masks. For the residency, I created a character, a paradigmatic young 21st century designer who is obsessed with technology, pop culture, mass media, digital socializing, all pervasive things around us. But he is also lost, lonely, critical, and longing for something concrete, although he is not sure what it is. I locked him in his flat for three months, alone with his laptop. His only creative outlet was to use the internet to make things, object poems that offered him release. He was a Western hikikomori trapped with only his ang own anxi anxieties and his online persona and his fake friends. He had access to only the most ubiquitous, easy to access fabrication technologies. 3D printing websites where he could email designs he had dreamt up overnight, click yes on PayPal, and receive them in the post the following day. Instant object expression. The loner on his laptop pinging files over the net to get 3D printed is just the extension of the studio Potter, the lone artist free of the market into the 21st century. 
The only exigency that guides the design of anyone's creations nowadays are the limits of their idiosyncrasy. Writing scenarios for the character, stories brought together issues he was grappling with, Facebook envy, generalized anxiety, smartphone addiction, with things he obsessively adored, be it Miley Cyrus or David Bowie memes. These then found form through his laptop late at night and were delivered to him in plastic, ceramic, plaster, nylon, metal, from me, 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 me totems that allowed him to be more than he could ever be, delicious and forever as fresh and cool as strawberry waiting for cream, as viral as Hillary Clinton sexting on her crackberry, to pots as kitsch as his recently deceased grandmother's doilies, her shower cap, her rubber plunger. Yantraments, florid little concoctions of formal exuberance that calmed his agitated mind, little belligerent pill boxes made of luridly pigmented plaster, fortresses for his mind in the war against that apex of mental genocide, his hated and beloved iPhone. Babels, endless towers that harbored in his mind the triumphant rise of civilization to the highest goal of endless difference, and total unity under the apotheosis of Google Translate, a home for the digital mendicant to walk away the inescapable buzzing of 13 billion voices. Weird ancient, strange-looking, the kind of thing that would look great in a fantasy film, anything old, to be reread and misunderstood and resurrected in bad digits, lurid, strange, ancient, vulgar, dirty and glorious, pink, red, hot ice cream. Unfortunately, I had to kill him to make my point, to take his collection, to take all his things that were him. Actually, by that point, the objects were more him than he was, and so I took them, and like the living room of one recently deceased, displayed him in his entirety. I bared it all, for all to see, in the glaring lights of the design museum. <laughs>